Let's talk about the home page, all right? Because the home page is quite an important part of your site. It's the, you know, the front facing page of your site, and it's usually one that people screw up, they try to do the wrong things on it. The home page has some very specific functions and some very things, specific things that it should not try to do. So let's go ahead and jump over to a home page on a Shopify store and I'll show you the good, the bad, and the ugly. All right, let's hop over. Okay, so here we are in an incognito window. We are gonna look at a store called Sugar and Cotton. Okay, this is one of the top Shopify stores in terms of traffic. It's I think it's in the top 30 or top uh, 40 uh, stores based on traffic. And now that the page is loaded, I don't know what they sell. Okay, so let's take a look at the site. Let's just do a real quick scroll. Actually, let's not even scroll. Let's just dissect as, as we go as if we were a brand new user. So I've never been to this site before. I loaded it in an incognito window to make sure that it's going to um, load all the normal stuff in case there's any caching or something like that. And let's take a look. All right, so sugar and cotton logo. Shop about track order, FAQs, contact, account icon, search icon, cart. Okay, then this ginormous gift ideas under 100 bucks. Shop now, and then there's a crown in the background. Are they, do they sell crowns? Are they a jewelry site? I'm not sure. And then they have down here on the lower left-hand side, you can see this proof element that keeps showing up saying, so-and-so bought this five minutes away, you know, or five minutes before, or just bought, right? So let's talk about that specifically first, okay? There's, that is a social proof app. There's a whole bunch of different ones out there for different kinds of platforms, but the concept was to show social proof that other people are buying the products and kind of get that buying frenzy going, okay? That's the concept. And it, when it was originated a couple of years ago, it worked out really well, okay? It was because it was new and it worked. And at, at the original t time, it was truthful, all right? Because it, it couldn't be spoofed. Then the app creators started allowing vendors to put in fake sales data or use sales data that's old and push it up to make it recent and allowing them to spoof the, the, the proof element, okay? Customers are savvy. They caught on to that, okay? The internet shoppers get more and more savvy every single day. Those proof elements have now gone from being something that actually inspires trust to something that now takes away trust. It makes the site look spammy or scammy and it makes the, sh the online shopper kind of think of those AliExpress or the, ch the cheese ball sites or the, the less than ethical sites, shall we say. Sal, shall we say, all right? So uh, we've tested this ungodly amounts of times and none of the stores that we partner with in our Amplified Partnership Program or the stores in our Business Accelerator Program do we allow or let or even give them the, con the idea of using those. And if we have that on there, we immediately take it off and we always see a lift in conversions. Now, guys, in case you've never watched one of my videos before, Build, Grow, Scale is an e-commerce optimization company and we do ridiculous amounts of e-commerce optimization. It's all we do 365 days a year and we've amassed a 400 plus million dollar data library of test results in terms of what's working and what's not working across a wide range of industries. Currently we're working in 30 different industries uh, diff and different verticals, all right? And then our we have over 600 stores in our business accelerator program at any one time and we're getting to roll that out with there and see how the tests work there. So when I'm giving you what I'm, the information that I'm gonna show you in this video, you can understand and believe that it's coming from real test results, it's the best foot forward, and it's the best information I can give you short of actually running tests for you on your store, okay? So, now we're looking at the home page again, we're seeing that proof thingy pop up every couple of seconds. That tells me that it's probably spoofed. Um, not that the sales order can't be that high, but it, it just doesn't normally work that way. It's, it's almost too consistent, okay? Now, let's talk about the above the fold, okay? The above the fold is the text and the visibility that what you can see without having to scroll that loads on the screen, okay? This is a big screen that I'm on, about a 26 inch monitor, and what you see is nothing. You don't know what they sell, okay? The primary focus of the homepage, okay? There's two functions. Number one, let the customer know, actually it should be three functions if we go. Number one is trust, so proof that they are a legitimate, trustworthy looking company. Two is that to let the customer know that they're in the right place, okay? That they found what they're looking for, that the, the site sells or the store sells what it is they're interested in or is with, sells the right kind of products. And number three, help the customer as quickly or the visitor as quickly as possible get off the homepage and onto a product page. 
help the customer find what they want to shop for. They don't shop on the homepage. The homepage is the first start of browsing. Now you may be saying, Tanner, I don't use the homepage. I send everybody to a product page. Okay, well guess what? As part of a buyer's due diligence, the vast majority of your buyers, if you track your Google Analytics data and, and watch your, your uh, visitor paths, you will notice that almost all your visitors before they purchase something will wind up on the homepage at some point. They're doing their due diligence. They're checking things out. They're making sure that, hey, is this site trustworthy? Is this site legit? Do I believe that I'm going to get the product or that the product is of high quality? All right, they're going to look for those kinds of things. And where they, one of the places they do that is the homepage. Okay, so right now as, as a above the fold for sugar and cotton, their entire homepage above the fold is a fail. Okay, because I land here, I have no idea what they sell. All I know is they have gift ideas under $100 and that I can shop, I can track my order, I can read FAQs, and I can contact them. Okay, what about product categories? What about a value proposition that states what they do? Right now, their value proposition is that they sell cheap products, gift ideas under 100 bucks. Okay, that isn't a value proposition. I don't even know what you sell. And I can see a crown, but well, do I want to buy a crown for under 100 bucks? That's clearly not a legit crown, right? So what do they sell? All right, and yes, I understand that below the fold, they may have this stuff, but this is not unique to sugar and cotton. Tons and tons of stores. We come in contact with thousands of stores a year and they all do this. I shouldn't say all, but a lot of them do this. They have this massive useless banner that takes up so much of the screen and they don't clearly communicate their value to the browser. Okay, this storefront right now does nothing to help the browser figure out what they're looking for, if they're in the right place or anything else. And then if we hover over shop, there's no drop down. So what, what am I shopping for? I don't want to shop yet. I'm browsing. I'm trying to figure out what you guys have. About, okay, oh, look, and now take 10% off your order right now. Use the coupon code SAVE10. Now we got a pop-up coming up that's offering me 10% and I off and I still don't even know what they sell. All right, think about that. So now I don't, not only do I not know what you sell, but now you're trying to give me a discount off your products that all, as far as I know, are already under a hundred bucks. So in my mind, in my buyer's mind, subconsciously, I start thinking, are the products overpriced? Do they have to give me a discount for me to consider their products worthy before I've even seen the product, right? This is not a good buyer's journey right off the bat, okay? Also, this take 10% off your order right now is a great thing to use as an exit offer. However, it should be behind some form of opt-in or spend to win or something like that because you shouldn't just, don't just throw the coupon out there without getting something in return. They're willing to give you their email address in exchange for a coupon or something along those lines and that way you have at least a chance to build a prospect list and then follow up market to those lists, okay? Just throwing the coupon code out there right now before they've even shown interest in a product screams of desperation, okay? So let's go ahead and get rid of this. All right. Let's, so up at the navigation, none of the navigation icons help the customer figure out what, the, what there is and what products they want to look at or anything. The closest one would be shop, but it's the wrong verbiage. They're not ready to shop yet. They don't even know what you have. Your navigation column, your horizontal navigation should lead the customer to buying pages, pages where they can buy something. Only one of those links up there actually does that, okay? And the track and order link, if that's a really big issue for you, it's better off served as a footer link or something like that. It does not need to be up in the top. And frequently asked questions. What does that mean? Questions that are asked frequently by your customers. So the question is, if the, if the question is asked so frequently, what's missing from my site? Well, the answer to those questions in the appropriate spot to illuminate that for the customer so they don't need to ask the question. So an FAQ, is not an excuse, or, or frequently asked questions, is not an excuse for you to go create an FAQ page. It's actually a, like a red flag for you to go, whoa, customers are asking this question. That means we as a store owner are failing to address those concerns and answer that on the page that it's important to. So FAQs are unnecessary if you actually take the time to figure out where the, the, the question is being asked and where you can answer it appropriately in the buyer's journey, okay? To the right of that, there's an account icon right here, this little personal thing. First of all, with these little icons, they should all have micro text underneath them, labeling them what they are. If you can, if you think of your uh, browser as Homer Simpson, okay, the, the lowest 
possible intelligence level of a shopper, okay? And that's not to say your shoppers are unintelligent, but you have to work at the lowest level. From him, from Homer Simpson on up, there's a vast, huge chunk of your uh, traffic that doesn't know what the icons mean. So we use microtext under them that says account, search, cart, okay? Not just on mobile, that should be on desktop as well. But the account icon specifically, usually, and again, in our experience, and with the exception of some specific subscription sites and things like that, very, very, very few customers actually use the account icon at the top. So we take it out of the menu because it's extra cognitive load that doesn't need to be there. We take it out and we put it down in the footer as a link. They can go down there to log into their account. Also, this store probably has a lot of products. I don't know yet because I haven't seen them, but I'm guessing they have quite a few SKUs. Search should be emphasized here, not hidden behind a little magnifying glass that then has a pop-up. Okay, this is even worse. Look at how this went to a full screen pop-up with a tiny little search bar faded out in the center of the screen. All right, if I'm on mobile, what's gonna happen? I click the search icon, the pop-up comes up and it blocks out my whole screen. And then I have to try to scroll around to find the X to get out of it to go back. This is a terrible user experience, okay? The search bar should be prominent. Again, think Amazon, think Best Buy, think Wayfair, think any of the stores that, that massively impact shoppers' behavior. They have a search bar for a reason. Not just because they have so many SKUs, but because it makes it easier for their buyers and their traffic to search and find what they're looking for. Again, that's the purpose of the homepage. Help them find what they want to get off the homepage. Additionally, if that doesn't excite you enough to make a search bar prominent on your homepage and on all of your pages, understand that your search traffic, visitors who come to your site and use the search box, are worth three to four times more than all of your other traffic. So anything you can do to encourage search will make you more money, even if you only have three, four products, okay? The next thing is the cart icon. That should stay, but it should have a the words cart underneath it. Okay, now let's scroll a little bit. Okay. So now we're coming down into what looks like some categories, okay? We've got gym paint craft kits, art products, holiday gift ideas, Van Gogh paint by numbers, and best sellers. Okay, so again, I'm on this site and I still don't really know what they sell. It looks like some painting stuff and some artsy fartsy stuff, and then there's socks and what looks like cookie cutters or something, okay? So these are definitely categories. Um, it looks kind of random. Uh, again, I still don't know enough about this site to know what I'm, what I'm buying. This could be communicated in this banner. If this is an arts and crafts type site or an artistic site, then a much better image could be utilized here along with some text and it would make a lot more sense. So let's keep scrolling down the homepage. Now we're looking at fe featured products. Okay. So we're going to keep scrolling. Okay, that's a lot of featured products. Wow. Okay. And now there's most popular items on a, on a slider. Okay. And then down here at the very bottom, there's some really microscopic text that's gray on white that says, we founded Sugar and Cotton with one simple goal, to provide amazing jewelry at amazing prices. Okay. Um, now I'm really confused. Now this is, this is great information if it actually was relevant to the site, but now I'm even more confused, okay? And now their next sentence says, we were tired of cookie cutter apparel stores with lackluster selections and boring gifts. So first you're a jewelry store and now you're an apparel store and now you're a gift store. It's, it's very confusing to the shopper, okay? Now if we scroll up, I see a watch, a necklace, okay, a couple necklaces and watches. I see shirts, uh, emoji slippers, nail polish, nail polish. So there's a, a mermaid blanket, a lot of things that aren't really socks, that aren't jewelry, makeup brushes, watercolor brushes for art. I mean, this is kind of weird, guys, considering I'm thinking, I, I, when I finally got to the bottom, I expected to be on a, a jewelry site, which is then now apparel site and then a gift site. So. This store does not make sense to the browser on the homepage. It's very confusing. Now, not to say they can't sell a lot of product, but they could certainly clear things up to make it easier for the, the, the consumer to know what's going on on the store, right? And to find products. Right now, I still don't even know what to click on. 
Also, if you notice they have these this little badge, this save money badge, okay? These are great, selectively used, okay? Think about these badges as like a sales sign, okay? And what who overuses and abuses a sales sign? Furniture stores, right? They're always on sale or they're always going out of business, right? Going out of business sale. Well, you've been here for five years. How long? And you've been going out of business the entire five years or sale or car lots. They always do it. Everything's on sale. And then the next week, everything's on sale, right? That's what you're doing here when every single product for the most part has that same badge. People don't believe it and you get banner blindness to it. So be selective about your badge use. Also, the homepage is not a place to dump all your products. You should have your value propositions and the proof above the fold. Then you should have your category pages or potentially some of your best selling products, but only say three to six of them, okay? Or maybe if you have a, a, some really too hot categories, you may show three products from each, from like your top three categories for a total of nine products or something like that. But this long ass thing is not the way you display product, okay? It's too much, especially not all these different random products because it just makes the, the, the store look confusing, looks cheap, makes the consumer like, am I in the right place? Do I wanna buy jewelry from a site that sells socks, makeup brushes, and uh, Van Gogh paint by number kits? It's not where I wanna buy my jewelry, not where I wanna buy jewelry for my wife, right? So you need to ask those things. This is kind of like a general store that's quasi niche and I'm not really sure what's going on. Okay, so too many products here as well. And then to also at the bottom, throw another slider on board with even more products to do with a different badge is just way, way overkill. And then this microscopic font down here that talks about the store but still doesn't tie anything together because it just makes more confusing isn't helping. All right, so on your homepage, any text you have on your store should be about 16 point font for the, the regular text. And then any headlines or headings should be larger than that, okay? Um, so the one thing they are really doing great is they're only showing three products across. On desktop, our tests have shown that th the three products across is the optimal display size and um, setup for displaying multiple products. Not four, not five, not two, not one. Three on desktop. On mobile, you can do two products if the products aren't super detailed and a smaller picture will work. Otherwise, if the product's detailed and needs a larger image, you wanna go one across on mobile. Okay, so the homepage is designed to inspire trust, assure the customer and reassure the customer that they're in the right place and on the store that has stuff that they're interested in. And third, help them get off the homepage as quickly as possible and to something that they're actually interested in. This homepage is a really good example of what not to do. Just because a bigger store is using a certain layout doesn't mean it's tested, doesn't mean it's optimized. These guys could do um, they're a good store, a good brand. They've, they're doing well, of course, but they could do so much better if they actually learned how to dial in and optimize their store. Speaking of optimization, if you liked this and you wanna learn how to optimize your store further, watch these two videos right here. And then also, if you like the video, click the button below, click this to subscribe, and then also click the little bell icon to make sure that you get notified when we release new videos. See you in the next one.